Hi, I'm Sophie from Encodian, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can use Blower's Populate Excel action. So this action allows you to start populating data into your Excel files. And it's different from just populating data row by row because you have control of where you want your data to be put in your Excel file. So you may have a really nice looking template, but your data is kind of added in different places all over the sheet. So using the actions free text syntax tags, you can then go ahead and add that data where it needs to be in the file. So let's go ahead and look at the solution. So my solution today is that I have a sales team and as the sales team go through and complete sales with their different customers, they need to record the sale on an app. So they're going to be doing this on a model driven app. Once the sale is complete, they can then generate an invoice by clicking one of the buttons up the top. And this is going to automatically, using Power Automate, generate an invoice and email this out to the customer so that they can pay the invoice before the due date. So for this solution then, I'm using three Dataverse tables, I'm using a model-driven app, and I'm using a Power Automate to drive everything in the back end. So first, let's look at the Dataverse tables I'm using. So this is the first Dataverse table and it's called Sales Records. So this is going to be kind of like the header record for a sale. So this is going to contain information about the customer. So I've got a column for customer name, customer email, customer address, customer number. I also have a column here called invoice generated. When invoice generated is changed from false to true because it's a yes no column. This is going to trigger off the power automate in the back end, which is going to use the populate Excel action to populate an invoice template. And it's then going to email this out to the customer. So that's my sales records table. I then have a sale lines table. So the sale lines table is related to the sales record table. So one sales record can be associated with multiple sales lines. The sale line has information about the product for that line, the quantity of products that the customer wants for that line. And it also has a formula column, which is automatically calculating the price of that line. So for example, if we look at sale one, we can see that it's looking at keyboards. And this is a lookup column to the third table I'm using, which is for products. So we can see that on this sales line, it was for keyboards and it was for two keyboards and the price was calculated here. So I'm just going to open up this formula column so you can see the formula that I'm using. And what this is doing is it's using that products lookup column. So we're going to do products dot price. And that's going to get the individual price of the item. And we're going to times that by the quantity to how many the customer is buying for that specific line. And this is going to automatically calculate this for us. And then that brings me nicely on to my third table, which is called products. And this just contains a list of all the products the company sell and the individual unit price for those products. So they're my three Dataverse tables. What I have then done is I've created these into a model-driven app. So this is my model-driven app. So we can see down the side, I've got products and I've got sales records. So these are my active sales records. So I'm just gonna open one up that I've already got here so you can see what it looks like when it's got data in, and then we'll go ahead and fill one out together. So this is what it looks like. You can see we've got that header information here with the customer information. And then I've configured this in the model driven app by adding the sales lines table in as a subgrid. And I've only allowed related records to be shown on the subgrid. That means for each of the sale records, you're only going to be able to see the related sale lines. And it means that we can have multiple sale lines associated to one sale record. So let's go through and start our new record. OK, so that's all in there. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. Now that that's saved, we can see that the subgrid has come up and I can go through and I can add a new sales line. OK, so I've added in my products. We can see my sales lines have now been added. So 
Now that the sale has gone through, everything is finished, the last step for the salesperson is to generate an invoice. So this can be done by clicking this custom command button up the top here that I've added into the app. And I've called it generate invoice. So what this is going to do is it's going to patch back to the sales record a row and it's going to change that invoice generated column from no to yes, so from false to true. And upon this changing, this is then going to trigger off the Power Automate. Now it has to be done this way because at the time of creating this solution and filming this video, you can't directly run a Power Automate from Power FX in a command bar button. So you have to do this by modifying the row or modifying a certain column in the row and then having this used as a trigger for a Power Automate. So it can still be done, but it's just a little way to get around it. Before I go into the Power Automate, I just want to show you the formula that I used in that button. So to go through and actually edit command bar buttons, we need to come through and edit our model driven apps. We then need to come to the entity that we're looking to change the button for. We need to click the ellipsis and then edit the command bar. So it's going to give us a few options, but I've added the command button to the main form. So I only want to edit this one today. And here we can see the ribbon. And of course, we can see that custom button I've already added. When adding in a custom command button, you can still use JavaScript, but there's now also the option to use PowerFX too. So you can come here and you can see JavaScript, but I'm going to run a formula. You can open the formula bar the same you would in a Canvas app. And here is where you will write your formulas. So we can see that the first thing I'm doing is patching, patching back to the sales record to change that invoice generated field to true. And I'm also then adding an in-app notification just to let the salesperson know that the invoice is now being generated and will be sent to the customer. And this also lets us know that the patch has been successful and that the flow is going to be running in the back end. So coming back to the app, let's go ahead and generate this invoice. And you can see that button's now been clicked and I've had my in-app notification here too. So this is my Power Automate. So my trigger for the flow is when a row is added, modified or deleted. And I've got this type set to modified and I'm selecting that invoice generated column because we only want this flow to fire when the invoice generated column is set to yes. The first thing I'm doing is I'm initializing an array variable called sales lines. And this is where we're going to be adding each of the sales line data. And we need to add it in as an array to be able to use it in our populate Excel action. After we've initialized the variable, we then need to use data versus list rows action. And this is so that we can list any associated sales line records with the sales record that triggered the flow. Now, because in the sales lines table, the sales record column is a lookup, it means we need to use this underscore the column name underscore value rather than just using the column name. This is just because it's a lookup. We need to make sure we're getting that value filled there. And we're going to do this equal to the unique identifier of the sales record that triggered the flow. And this is going to bring back any related sales line records. Once we have our sales lines, we then need to use data versus get a row by ID action. And this time we're going to be looking into the products. And this is because we need to find out what the product's name is. Because in the sales line table, the products column is a lookup. If we just put the product value, it's just going to give us the GUID, which is no good being put on the invoice. So we need to use the get a row by ID and put in the GUID there as the row ID so that we can bring back the product name. So once we've got this, we can then append a JSON to our array variable with the product name, which comes from that get a row by ID action. The quantity, which comes from the current item in our apply to each loop, and the price, which again comes from the current item in the apply to each loop. And this is going to build up our sales lines array. So the next step then is to compose our data JSON. So this is going to be the input to our populate Excel array. But before I go any deeper here, I first want to actually show you what my Excel template looks like. So this is my Excel template. 
So I'm just going to zoom in and so you can see it more clearly. So we can see here we have these syntax tags. Now, if you've used Flowers Populate Word or Populate PowerPoint Action, you'll notice that these are very similar, if not the same in some cases. And this is why this action is so flexible and it allows you to add in data anywhere on the file because it's just using free text. So it allows you to start building out really nice looking Excel files automatically using Power Automate. So for my details, I'm adding in my invoice number. I'm adding in the invoice date. And with this action as well, in your templates, you can start to format your data. So you can see here, I put in a date format to make sure my date comes through looking like this. If I didn't have the date format, it would also add a time in there, but I don't want the time to be added. I want it to look like this. The tags you see that look like this, this and this, is just gonna add in your standard text, numbers, any kind of standard thing like that you can have looking like this that doesn't need formatting. So next we have this table here. So this table is a bit different. We only need one line in the template because the action is then going to go and populate this row by row. And the reason we needed to build up that sales lines array in Power Automate is because that is what is going to be looped through for this table. So each of those JSONs we were appending to that array variable is going to be equal to one line in this Excel table. So we can see the syntax for this is that we're using for eaches at the start. And then we need to make sure we close the for each at the end. When we initialize the for each, we're going to be saying that it's line in sales lines. You can do this as anything. It could be X in sales, X in Y. But what's important is whatever you use at the beginning, so my line here, Whenever you build out the next columns, it's going to stay as line dot and then whatever the tag is. So this is line dot quantity and line dot amount. So that's how you can start to build up your tables. And this table here is actually in an unstructured data format. I haven't actually converted this to a proper Excel table. So this works for both your structured data and your unstructured data depending on how you need it to be in your Excel document. I then have one more tag being used down here for the line total. Now I couldn't just use Excel sum formulas here because there's no data in here and we don't know how many rows are going to be actually added to this table. So we need to use again the syntax for the populate Excel action, which is very doable. So here I've got sales lines, which is the name of that array. And then the letter you use here doesn't really matter, but I've stuck with an L. So I'm doing L to L dot amount, and that is going to automatically add up each of the amounts. So in this column here, each of the amounts that get added will be summed and then put in the line total here. And then this total is using a sum because we know that it can add this to the shipping. And that is my Excel template. So now let's quickly come back to the Power Automate. And I just want to highlight these JSON key values here. Now, when you're using this action, it's really important that these keys match these tags. If they don't match, you're going to get an error or the data will not be added. So just really important here that whatever key values you're using, and even if you're adding in an array like this, you can see here with sales lines, it has to match what you have here or it's not going to work properly. So just bear that in mind as you're building up your template and as you're building up your JSON input. So first thing to do before we can actually use the populate Excel action is to get the file content. So I'm getting my invoice template content here. And then we are going to be populating the Excel. So I'm using the file content from the step before. We're going to be using the JSON data we built up in that compose action. So I'm going to be using the compose outputs and everything else I've left as it comes out of the box when you add the action in. So once we've populated our file, I'm then gonna be creating the file back into OneDrive and I'm gonna use the unique invoice name and the file content from the populate Excel action. And then the last step is to email this back out to the customer. So I'm using their given customer email. I'm letting them know when the due date is. 
and I'm adding in that Excel file invoice as an attachment. So I'm just using the OneDrive name and the file content from the Populate Excel action. Now you could add an extra step in here to convert that Excel file to PDF before sending it out. However, I haven't done it in the solution today, but the option is there if that's what you would prefer. So that's the Power Automate. So let's go and have a look at how the solution works and what the populated file looks like. So if you remember rightly, we already filled out this sales record and I've already generated the invoice. So let's head over to Outlook here. We can see we've got a new email with the invoice unique name. We can see the due date in two weeks. And if I open this up, we can see our completed invoice file. The data has been populated. So we can see this matches this, the invoice date, the due date. We can see that the billing information is correct. We can see that this table has now been populated with each four of my sales lines, each with the correct quantity and the amount. The line total has been added up correctly and so has the total down the bottom here. And that is how you can start to automatically start populating your really nice looking Excel files. So this video today has shown you how you can start to use Encoji and Flower's Populate Excel action. So in this example today, we had a really nice looking Excel invoice template file with nice colors and nice fonts. And we started to populate the data here in different areas. We had data being populated up the top. We had data being populated in a table. And you really do have a lot of flexibility when using this action due to being able to add in the syntax tags as free text wherever you want on the page. There's lots of documentation available for this action online already. And I have put a link to this in the blog post. So please do check out the documentation. I'll also add the link to this below the video. And if you have any questions about anything you saw today, or if you have any questions about any of the syntax that we're using, please drop us a comment down below or get in touch with us at Encodium. And as always, happy automating.